You, sir, would you like to share? Oh, uh, I'm actually just here for moral support. I'm friends with Riley. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to say you your name. You can say my name. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm not part of the anonymous program or anything, but I'm not going to tell anyone I was here. And I won't tell anyone you guys are here either. Stop that. This is a closed meeting. Good. And we are here with Brittany Snow now. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Oh my God, I am like just recovering from the heaving that I was doing while watching this film. It is, it's heartbreaking because it is so real and so true and done so well. Thank you. Um, the subject matter obviously is is very touchy. It's very a sensitive subject. What what was it about this story that made you want to tell it? Mm -hmm. Well, I I always wanted to do a story about this subject when I was actually going through it in my early twenties. Um, I have been very vocal about my mental health when in my teenage years and early 20s. And I remember wanting to see a movie that was about the type of altruistic love of someone supporting someone going through addiction and what it was like to be in their shoes because I had, you know, a boyfriend who wanted to support me, but there was, there was such a strange sort of codependence to our yeah. re relationship because I was not in a place where I could receive love in that way. So I think I wanted to always see a story about that in a rom-com sort of sense, and I couldn't really find one. So I had that idea to do this subject matter, and then you know, I have I have many, many years away from that and was able to tell it in a therapeutic way now. Yeah. You know, in the beginning of the film, we meet Riley and we meet Ethan, and she was just getting out of rehab for her eating disorders and addiction to food, I imagine. Um, and Ethan was just getting out of a relationship, but also out of jail. I know it's more than this relationship, but what was it about this relationship that was pivotal in telling this story? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's so important in terms of showing uh, stories with addiction that we don't just focus on the disease itself it's the because I do around. think it's the people, it's romantic love, it's friendship, it's it's all of the like all encompassing sort of acts of trying to be a human. And yes. I think a lot of stories just sort of get into the nitty gritty of what it's like to overcome addiction, but that's just one viewpoint of getting through it it's it's actually trying to survive and be a human being go to the grocery store fall in love go to a bar i mean all of these different things are are so much more rich and interesting to me than just focusing on the part of the rehab yeah. um, story. Because and, yeah. it feels organic, it feels authentic, it feels very raw and true, which is, I think, why it was so painful to watch. But, you know, you premiered this at South by Southwest. You won the award at South by Southwest. The two actors that you cast in the leads are so perfect for this. Yeah. What was the casting process like, and how did you know what the right dynamic was gonna be? The casting process was really difficult because I had to actually find unicorns in a way yes. because you have to, specifically with the with the Riley character, she does a lot of really selfish things, which I think yeah. I didn't want to shy away from in terms of an addiction story where you're making a lot of selfish decisions because you're in your disease, but you still want to root for her and she's so brazen yeah. in finding herself that that's admirable because she's trying to better herself, but she just doesn't have the tools to. So I tried to find someone that was huggable and likable, yeah. but yet still sort of vulnerable in that way. And Courtney really encapsulated she that. She really did. And then Thomas is just so damn likable and he lovely is. and just so good. And, and I've never seen him in anything before. Oh, really? Me, Earl and the Dying Girl is one of my favorites. They're complex, layered characters. You did such an incredible job with that. You um, aligned with the National Alliance for Eating Disorders for this film. You partnered with them. What do you hope from this film? Do you hope it's a conversation starter between parents and kids? I definitely, Between friends. I do think it should be a conversation starter, but I, I, I really set out for it to not be didactic any, in any way because what I don't like about these sort of films that sometimes have a message behind them is that they're sort of preaching a type of way of going about this. And what I know from recovery and what I know from mental health is that every story is different and there is no linear you know, viewpoint of this. And I just wanted to describe it, not necessarily solve it. Yeah, and you've been doing that. You know, I mentioned you've been very open about your mental health um, issues and wellness. Um, and you've done that through the September Letters, which is now three years, right? So tell everybody what September Letters is, how it came about. September Letters is a mental health um, awareness charity, and it's a website 
and also a place for people to go and write letters about their story, whether it's whatever type of mental health struggle or um, recovery you've been through, you can write a letter, you can re receive a letter, you can request a letter. And really we've formulated a lot of really great connections of people writing to each other and becoming pen pals in a way and feeling like maybe you're alone in this one topic, but then actually finding someone online and having a very shared story yeah. is I think the key to feeling less alone. Obviously. Absolutely, I think it's so helpful to have support from like, you know, people that have experienced the similar situations. Yes. So you recently also got an Oscar nomination, which is like, I mean, <laughs> is Well, that not me, but the movie the I was movie in. Yeah, yeah. For Red, White, and Blue. Yeah. Um, which is about another sensitive subject. Mm -hmm. It's about abortion. And from what I read, what I understand is that people have been reaching out to you yeah. and saying, like, thank you for this because it's allowed me to open up. And it's changed a lot of perspectives. I knew that the story was really important to tell and it, it really does flip the idea on its head because you go into it with preconceived notions and then throughout the short film you sort of challenge those those notions. And I think a lot of people have reached out to me saying, you know, I was I I really was steadfast in this one opinion and yet this has actually cha challenged my view. Yeah, but you're also in North Carolina right now, right? You're filming a new series that's called Hunting Wives. Yeah. And it's based on the book. So I don't I'm not even that familiar with this book. What can you tell us about it? It's a really, really sexy, soapy murder mystery book set in Texas. Gun toting country girls that are very, very wealthy. And I am a Democrat, Boston, you know, a uh, liberal that comes and sort of switches things up and gets um, pinned on a murder. So I have to solve this murder. And anybody who's read the book knows what direction it takes. It takes yeah. a new turn for my character and I get to explore some different things. <laughs> How much fun. You have so many great different things going on right yeah. now. So congrats to all those things on all those things. And this movie, I'm telling you, it does hurt to watch it, but you need to watch it. You should watch it with your friends. You should watch it with your children. Um, and Parachute it is hitting theaters today. So please check it out. Brittany, so thank you so much for stopping by and chatting with me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course.